chance is addressing some issues in the community that really, really, really needs to be addressed. We as an agency really care a lot about kids that struggle. Bottom line is that it helps the children and it's helping real children every single day. Chad's Coalition was founded by my husband and I in memory and honor of our son Chad who lost his battle to depression in 2004. He died by suicide. I wanted to try to find all of those kids like Chad that were sitting in those desks uh, that were struggling silently and not having the courage to reach out for help. Our first program was family support where we wanted to connect families to services that were available to them. Because when Chad got sick for us, we jumped in the scale, it turned on high. We didn't know what to do, where to turn. And then we also then started the SOS Signs of Suicide program, which is an evidence-based program talking to kids about depression and suicide and what it looks like. Since 2011, we've had Chads come in when I was at the junior high for those two years, and then we've had Chads in the high school every year that I've been here. Every one of those programs have morphed into something even a little bit different. In the social and emotional well-being program, we go in, we try to change the culture of that school in terms of working with kids one-on-one. -on -one. Family support has transitioned from providing connections to providing one-on-one -on -one clinical support for kids who struggle with anxiety or depression or actively having thoughts of suicide. And currently, I think about 45% of the kids that we see in our family support program uh, are struggling with suicidal thoughts. It's really important now more than ever because two years ago we did have the three suicides in the spring. It is becoming more talked about and I think it's great for Chad's to come in and recognize what the students' concerns are, also our staff's concerns. I go into the classrooms and being able to speak with them and really asking them, you know, when you think about a person being depressed, what does that look like? Think about a person that might have thoughts about harming themselves, what are those signs? And then asking them, what would you do? We know when we go into a classroom, when we start talking about suicide and there's 25 students, we know that there will probably be, based on statistics, that there will be between one to two of those kids are going to try to kill themselves that year. But we're talking to that whole classroom, empowering every one of those students in that classroom that they can make a difference. At the end of our presentation, we basically do a screening that sees if a student or anybody else is having basically an elevated risk, potentially doing harm to themselves. There's been several times that I've been in a classroom that four or five people will write a self-ID for one particular person and their grade and their classroom but that presentation really spoke to them saying, okay, this person really, you know, immediately needs help. We had one specific one um, that he was really down when he was on the bus ride home. He disclosed to two friends. He reached out to two kids that were sophomores that had had the signs of suicide presentation, and they immediately went and sought out the coach and told him right away. It was a good call. <laughs> There's always barriers to access care. And we do a lot of work in the underserved community. Primarily with people of color, a lot of the times um, having the discussion about depression and suicide is taboo. You can see actually changes and you can measure changes. The CHADS mentor was the first thing that we put in place once a kid got on our radar. The CHADS mentoring relationship provided an outlet for those children that were that really needed to talk about what was going on. Just to have somebody consistently come and just listen to me. You know, very rarely, you know, even as adults, do you have somebody that'll just listen. We crunched the numbers and children who were placed with a mentor, they saw a 43% reduction in conversations with the dean of students that might be related to behavior or disruption or something that was preventing them from learning in the classroom. And that's a pretty giant decrease. Anybody can look like Chad. My message is that nobody needs to go through this alone. It's not something that anybody can prevent. The mentor helps them get to a place where they can be the most successful in their classroom. So we try to meet kids where they are, and that's in the school. And so now a lot of our family support is provided through different schools. Uh, we also have individual counseling that we do in an off-site location. And so all of our programs are very interconnected. Chance is a gold mine uh, in the community. 
As a mom who's lost a child, anything I can do so that my story is not your story. To take that challenge that she faced in life and to turn that around, you know, to help other people, grow it to help other people, I think that's, that's so fantastic. How we're just so spread thin, but for somebody like our clinician to come in here and be able to, again, donate that time, that one-on-one -on -one time, or even when she's done our group work, have, have that time with them is just amazing. And our students are responding so well, and, and we've seen growth from that. And I think, to me, that's worth every penny.